hi there. I'm John Porter. I'm the Urban Agriculture Program Coordinator with Nebraska Extension located in Omaha. And I'm going to tell you today about a little project that uh, we worked on with some partners here in the Omaha area last year as a response for COVID. And this is uh, specifically around Cooper Farm, which is a property that's owned by Omaha Home for Boys, but I've been able to use it for the last few years for my programming to do classes and lead tours, etc. cetera, there. Uh, and last year, early on in the year, before the pandemic even really started to hit, the home reached out to me and asked if I could use more space. They were pulling back from the farm a little bit uh, and wanted to see if I wanted all the growing area. And uh, I said yes, even though I had no plan for it. Uh, but I reached out to several partners uh, that I was able to uh, to pull along. And I think we did something very special uh, for for COVID. Uh, and I think it'll be something that, that uh, we're going to continue on uh, in our work. And so I'm going to talk about this uh, collaboration that we built at Cooper Farm, this work that, that we were doing together. And this sort of spurred out of uh, early on during the pandemic, the start of the pandemic, uh, several organizations got together to talk about how are we going to respond to this. There was uh, several Zoom meetings uh, that I was took part in leading, and Megan McGuffey from Community Crops was also leading. And we had several organizations that came together, and we had two big projects, I think, that spurred out of that. One was this Cooper Farm project, uh, and then was another was a project that was led by the Latino Center for the Midlands and the Big Garden uh, in South Omaha, and they brought in uh, Bryan High School as well, uh, where they had student interns growing food in South Omaha. And so these two projects sort of got their start uh, early on in the pandemic. And so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what happened here at Cooper Farm, what we're so proud about, what happened at Cooper Farm, uh, and what we're going to continue in the future. So we had several organizations that came together in this effort to utilize the land that we had at Cooper Farm. Of course, Omaha Home for Boys, they're providing the land. Uh, it's, it's their farm. Uh, and in Nebraska Extension, we've had uh, some, some work out there for, over the last few years doing uh, some education out there, also using it for our trial program. Uh, we're growing crops for the All-America Selections Home Garden Seed Trial Program, which is a national trial, uh, and we've used that for several years. But in 2020, we brought along City Sprouts, uh, Lutheran Family Services, their Global Roots Refugee Farming Program, Whispering Roots, and Refugee Women of Nebraska uh, as partners to sort of collaborate together out here. And, and we work together really well, uh, sharing some tasks, sharing some funding, sharing resources. Uh, and I think we accomplished some great things. This is one of the, the great things that we see uh, that actually happens uh, during COVID uh, in 2020 is, is that we're working together much better and we're actually uh, getting some things done that maybe wouldn't have happened. Uh, it's, I think, it refreshing to see how, um, even though we're in a tough situation, we actually find some common ground and are able to do good things when we're working together. So I'm just going to share right off the bat some of the key outcomes uh, that we had from this work. So Lutheran Family Services provided some plots for some, some refugee families, uh, and they were able to provide uh, refugee uh, plots for uh, about 24 refugee families. And we'll also uh, include the Refugee Women of Nebraska, which is a program that I've worked with for several years. Uh, they, they had several uh, folks that were also out uh, gardening uh, in a community garden style plot. They, they garden communally. Uh, the refugee families that Lutheran Family Services worked with had their own individual plots. And so we were able to give them space to grow their own culturally appropriate food, to give them access to food, which was really exciting. Um, that program, plus City Sprouts, uh, which was growing food to, to uh, either donate in the community, to sell at uh, pay-what-you-can markets in different communities, uh, and also some that we grew with our trial program. Uh, we grew over 10,000 pounds of produce to support the local uh, communities, uh, to donate, to, to sell at low cost. Um, there was hands-on trainings with City Sprouts for their interns. 
Uh, we had volunteers also uh, working with City Sprouts. Uh, in our trial crop program, we were able to bring out the Master Gardeners uh, and other volunteers and uh, trial 24 new crops uh, that will hit the store shelves at some point uh, in the near future. Let's learn a bit more from some of the partners. This is Aaron French from City Sprouts and Kate Cahey from Lutheran Family Services. I'm Kate Cahey and I work with Lutheran Family Services of Nebraska and I'm the Refugee Agricultural Partnership Coordinator and I um, support a group of farmers in a new program called Global Roots and we have a couple different locations where the farmers farm at. Uh, this specifically, this location is Cooper Farm um, in partnership with Omaha Home for Boys, Nebraska Extension, Whispering Roots, and City Sprouts. About us, we have farmers, folks from all over the world. Um, their home countries are all over the world and they are coming together on this community farm model where uh, they get a 50 by 50 plot. Hopefully in the future uh, we will have more land and more space for them to farm. Uh, they're highly skilled and knowledgeable. They really just need the access to the land, some equipment that they can use for farming, um, and support to begin to market what they're growing if they, if they would like to do that. So our role is really that navigator support um, to allow them to cast their own vision for farming because they uh, are highly skilled and our job isn't to tell them how to farm or what to do. They have this indigenous knowledge that um, they know uh, what to grow and this allows them to grow crops that are, um, for, that are part of their own culture so that they can also have access to their own foods to be able to bring home and eat and cook things like that. Yeah, so I'm Aaron French. I manage the farm and internship programs at City Sprouts, and we're super excited to be able to partner with Global Roots, uh, Luther Family Services, um, across Omaha really, but at this specific location, um, and also with Whispering Roots and Nebraska Extension as well. Um, our summer internship program has 15 high school to college age interns, and kind of building off of, of what Kate said about um, empowering their farmers to grow. We're really trying to help train young people uh, with the skills, knowledge, and experiences both for kind of like first-time employment but also uh, with some very specific urban agriculture, um, horticulture, and some culinary skills as well. So here at Cooper Farm we have a team of five interns who've been working about a quarter acre throughout the summer um, under the great direction of our team leader Laura here. Uh, we're growing cucumbers, a bunch of hot peppers, sweet peppers, potatoes, beans, you name it. Um, they've got it out here. They've been doing an incredible job and we're both super excited um, to kind of like see where this partnership can go in the future. So we do have some future plans. This, this collaboration really works so well uh, that we want to continue growing together at this space. We want to expand our growing area. We think we can find more area at the farm uh, to grow not only fruits and vegetables, uh, but maybe even expand into some other small um, agricultural ventures uh, that we could use for training purposes, uh, but also provide sort of a, uh, those, those plots or community garden plots or even areas for other folks to do other agricultural things on the farm. Um, we want to develop educational programming, so we're, we'll work together to develop uh, some shared resources for the interns, for the refugees, and also offer educational programs for the public through extension uh, in the future. We want to sort of turn it into a demonstration and education farm. We also want to develop marketing opportunities for crops grown by the families, the refugee families, but also the organizations, the interns, uh, so that we can, we can have sort of a farmer's market either on site or nearby uh, to provide those opportunities as well. So we're already applying for grants, we're already looking for funding, uh, and we're really pulling together resources to share here at the site, uh, working with Omaha Home for Boys to expand our footprint at the farm and provide some, some great opportunities. And there were several other great opportunities that happened at the farm. This was also a, a food box uh, drop spot uh, for the, the, the COVID response food boxes uh, that we, we had. Uh, Lone Tree Foods used that. A lot of the interns and families were able to participate in that uh, as, as well as several others. 
So we're looking for a bright future uh, and growing even more after we get through uh, the COVID pandemic. And so we're really excited about that future.